This is how I put the three capacitors together in series. Then I decided to use Corona Dope. Uh, I could have just uh, taped up everything. That would work just as well. But when I took a look at the inside of the chassis and where it was going to go, one wire went to a wafer switch. So that's why I put on a flexible wire on one of the capacitors because I wanted to take the stress off of uh, that connection to the wafer switch. Wafer switches are uh, pretty fragile and I didn't want to take a chance of um, breaking that switch because if I uh, had uh, broken it or damaged it that could be a real problem could even end the project. I only had two capacitors that I needed to replace and here's the other one it's a 10 microfarad the original is 10 microfarad at 250. Uh, this one, as you can see, is uh, 10 microfarad at 450. And I um, decided to do it this way because to get at the screw to take that old capacitor out, I would have to uh, unsolder other parts. And I found that it's better... Um, if I don't have to do that and move stuff around, uh, it's better just to uh, do it this way because uh, you might uh, accidentally break something uh, just to remove an old part. And there's plenty of room here, so I just decided to leave it in. I don't have the wiring diagram yet, so I went ahead and replaced the battery like somebody else had installed uh, many years ago. And I'm not quite sure why, but somehow it seemed right. So I thought, well, we'll go ahead and uh, duplicate that, and then we'll just test out the meter and see how it works. I had this on the Variac on 100 volts for oh, about an hour or so. Now it's on 120 volts and everything seems to be fine. Take a closer look here. I'll move these. That's the ranges. It's on ohms, and it doesn't move much, which is a real good sign. Now that was positive volts, negative volts. So it looks like it's going to be pretty good. This is AC volts, and I'll put it on a sensitive reading, and I'll touch this right here. So it looks like it's going to be a pretty nice meter. When I continue to test the meter, uh, one of the things that I do is I move the tubes around in their sockets a little bit, and when I did that, the meter would uh, show different readings. So that means that the pins and or the socket is dirty. So I turned off power and uh, pulled out each of the tubes and cleaned them with a cotton swab and a very small amount of WD-40 and that took care of the problem. 
Okay, I want to do a quick demo here. Let's see. That yeah, looks like the meter's warmed up. Let's see. Yeah, that's okay there. Okay, this is on the times 10 scale. So this is reading 260, oh, eight or nine, right up there. Okay, let's try the digital. It's on the 400 scale. Two hundred and sixty six sixty seven. That's pretty good. Okay, let's set this up to read it. Battery. And let's set this up to fifteen volt scale. Volt battery. That's Week. Okay. Let's see here. This is a little over eight volts. That's a 7.95. Okay, but I didn't adjust the zero on this meter. It'll make a little difference. Now, nope. right at eight. Well, that's pretty good. Take that. That's going to be a nice meter. Here's another look at the results. First, on the ohm scale, I'm reading this resistor, and then the uh, 9 volt battery that's uh, a little bit weak. This is going to be a very, very nice meter. I'm glad that uh, I got it going and surprisingly didn't really have to do a whole lot to the circuitry. Just uh, a couple of capacitors and for right now replacing that one and a half volt D battery.